Dramatization. After a car wreck, you may have to fight with a highly trained insurance company rep whose job is to knock your damaged claim down and out. It's a bad idea to enter the ring alone against a trained boxer, and it could be a bad idea to fight against a big insurance company by yourself. When the bell rings, attorney Dennis Sperling will be there to fight for your rights. If you've been seriously injured in a car wreck, call me, attorney Dennis Sperling, at 866-529-2444. That's 866-529-2444. Hi, my name is Stephanie, and these are my two adorable and handsome sons. And that is my ex-husband, attorney Dennis Sperling. He practices personal injury law and will be more than happy to help you with claims arising from automobile accidents. He doesn't get paid unless you get paid. And as we first wives know, the more our ex-husbands get paid, the more we get paid. So let me help him help you. Call Mr. Sperling at 713 229 0770. Call my dad, daddy. Dramatization. Bad drivers cause car wrecks. Not paying attention to the road, operating electronic devices, and drinking while driving can lead to serious injuries. If you've been the victim of a bad driver, a trial lawyer may be able to help you recover money to pay your medical bills, reimburse you for lost wages, and compensate you for the pain caused by your injuries. If you, your friends, or family have been injured in a car wreck, contact me, Attorney Dennis Sperling, toll free, 866-529-2444. I'm here to help. Hi, my name is Dennis Berlin. I'm not a lawyer, but my daddy is. Yeah. If you've been hurt in a car accident, then call my daddy. No need to scream and yell like a little kid. Yeah, no, yeah. My daddy will fight for your rights. Yeah, fight for your rights. If you've been involved in a car accident, call my daddy, return in Dennis Sperling. Hello, I'm attorney Dennis Sperling. If you've been injured in a car wreck, call me at 713-229-0770. Call my daddy, daughter, daddy. from impoverished areas that are desperate. Spread it out. I realize that the US dollar is worth a lot in third world countries and there are women that will appreciate that because they can do a lot with a little bit of our currency. So this is such a pathetic thing to admit out loud. I almost can't believe how often passport bros do it publicly. Like anytime you see a video of a woman saying like, these are the standards I have for a man who I would like to date or marry. There's always one of them in the comments, multiple. Six years together for 20 with my husband who recently left and he's no longer in the country and has abandoned the relationship. So I would like to proceed with attempting to sell the home that we share together and move on and I was hoping that you could help me with that. My phone number is- Thank you. Bye. So depressed. I unfollowed him on Instagram because I don't want to see his new life. Like I just feel like that would be too painful. But curiosity killed the cat. And I went and looked at his page today. And he changed his profile picture to a picture of him lying on a beach. Like, he's just out here living life. Like, without a care in the world. Like, he doesn't even care. 
maybe he never cared. You know what I mean? Maybe he never cared. Maybe I was just a meal ticket. Convenient. He's legit just lying on a beach without a care in the world. So the boy, I don't know if I told you guys this already, but he he left me, but he actually left the country. Like it's literal abandonment. So I'm just stuck here with you know the house the mortgage the car the this the that which has both our names on it but he said deuces so i need to i need to figure it out so i'm gonna go speak to a lawyer today and um put my big girl panties on <laughs> and try to clean up this mess that he left me in Yo, you guys, like, can you guys believe this? Because I really can't believe this. That is my life right now. If it wasn't for my girls, my friends, my family, I would have probably jumped off a bridge. I'm not even going to lie. Like, literally, I would have ended it all because this is a lot. It's a lot. He did me dirty. He did me really dirty, but I, I love him. I miss him. I want him. But, I mean, he made his choice, right? You can't force somebody to want you back. Today was a hard day, but I'm so glad that I had my girls here. Since my husband abandoned me. And today I woke up to an Uber notification. Because I told you guys he left the country, right? So you know when you take an Uber at home, it just says Uber, but when you take an Uber... Let's just say for shits and giggles in Brazil, it'll say Uber Brazil. Um, that's connected to my business account, sir. Are you on a fucking business trip? Are you okay? Does your new not have Uber? Yo, this man just ruined my whole morning with that. Last week he wanna message me asking me if I changed the Netflix password. Yo, you up and abandoned me. You wanna know about the Netflix password? Does your new not have Netflix? Sir, are you okay? My nigga, you wildin'. By the way, guys, I say nigga now. So, if you don't like it, bye. I don't have no more white people in my household to censor myself for. You understand what I'm saying? This is a clear admission that white men, when they date black women, they get treated well. Versus black men who date black this is my ebay account i barely use it i just logged in today look at my watch list look at that one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten pairs of women's volleyball shoes in size 11 i wear eight and a half bitch you using my ebay account to shop for your monster foot bitch are you okay sir are you okay like are you actually okay you guys look I cannot believe I married such like a heartless, mean-spirited guy, you know what I mean? And this is no shade to any of my tonettes who are size 11. You are not a monster for a bitch, but his bitch, that's a monster for a bitch. <sighs> Needless to say, I need to sit down and reset all my passwords. I've already done the major stuff like, you know, banks and emails and stuff. There's little things I forget about, such as each you and like next and stuff like that like this guy's just out of his mind and cars fucking mustangs essentially two weeks in july 2nd of 2019 that was the day that my then husband got on a plane and left he abandoned the marriage the relationship and left now i will say that prior to that happening i had found out that he had an affair and when i found out 
if you're obviously devastated and angry and, and you know just full range of emotion um that comes with that and they stay that's a great time etc so everything was going smoothly or at least that's what he was presenting to me fast forward to july 2nd 2019 um you know it was a regular morning i got up had started to get some work done he made me um i think i made a cup of tea and went down to my workspace he made me lunch and he left the house and that was the last time i ever saw my then husband again he actually completely abandoned the relationship he not only left the city he left the country he left the continent got on a plane and left no forwarding address no um you know new phone number no nothing he just left so as you can imagine i was I, it was like being hit with a truck. Like I was completely, um, like a, the rug was pulled out from under me, which was where I had the separation agreement sent to. Um, but that failed. So that address was no longer associated with him or his family. So I did end up contacting him. Now I didn't have a forwarding address, obviously, or for a phone number. When he initially left the country, he was still using my business phone, my Uber accounts. He was still using all my business accounts, which shortly thereafter I canceled. So the only um, information I had for him was an email address. So I emailed him asking him where he wanted the divorce paper sent. And he received it, but did not respond. So at that point, I have you guys, being here for me through this journey um your girl is officially divorced ya okay divorcee tony if you will that kind of sums it up it's not really juicy you know it's not as juicy as maybe some of y'all thought it was going to be but really covid delayed the process but he dragged the process on and um i'm just happy that's over with you know he owes me thousands of dollars like i said he was still using my phone for international calls and ubers and uber eats and you know lawyer fee all that he owes me thousands of dollars but i'm gonna take the l on that because i literally am no longer associated with him and i want nothing to do with him ever again What's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome everybody, welcome back to the broadcast. This is Dennis Sperling, also known as the Blizzard King, also known as Uncle D, and I'm back in action, baby. I've been in Mexico, Uncle D got that good fresh fade from my favorite Mexican barber down there. New Mexican barber, but anyway, and uh, you know, I'm feeling tan and refreshed, man. So big shout out to everybody who came through, man, uh, while I was on vacation, man, and gave me those warm uh you know you deserve it big shout out to my man urban eagle and tesmo official they're not our problem anymore black men are free so that's right somebody type give us free <laughs> give us free in the chat room let me get a give us free uh, that i'm gonna start cry for freedom we are definitely free fellas before i go any further i want to give a really big shout out to this gentleman he does great work um, he goes, he, his website, well, I, let me say it like this. He goes by the name of the, uh, well, let me put his link up because this is where I got that from. But isn't he goes by the name of the Brazil Yeesh. 
All right, so big shout out to him. I was looking at his channel over on my break, you know, my my break away from YouTube, and I was like, oh my God, this is something that I need to talk about. Not necessarily about the passport bros, because I've talked about that, you know, for so much time now. We all kind of understand that, but the the effect of it and why it's happening. And so to try to put this thing in context, we're gonna have a con conversation about the social contract. Somebody type that in the chat room, the social contract, because that's what I want to talk about. Okay. I want to, I want to address that. The videos that you saw at the beginning of the broadcast are just to warm up, but this is the context. And I want you guys to understand something. I really want you to understand you're going to leave this, this broadcast with a great understanding and probably a clear conscience. But uh, let's do this. I got something new for you guys. I think I think y'all enjoy this. This is uh, this is gonna be one straight from. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Hopefully it comes up. This is gonna be one straight from the uh, from the from the beaches of de Mexico. If I can get it up here, uh, get this together for you guys. But we're gonna take we're gonna do what we gotta do, and we'll be right back. Y'all make sure y'all follow the screen. And you know what the screen is about to tell you to do, okay? Maybe you don't. If you don't know, anyway, you'll see. Uh, but more than that, big shout out to everybody who helped me get to uh, 60,000 subscribers. It's been a minute, but we got to keep on pushing, man. I want to get to 100 soon. But we'll be right back. <laughs> Cadillac with Uncle D, man. I remember when I was a young boy, man, I, I tell these stories all the time. And those of you guys who have read my books, who do have my books, I speak a lot about my Uncle Slim. Now, Uncle Slim kind of took me under the wing uh, when I was at John Muir Elementary School. He didn't really pay too much attention to me or any of the kids until I got a little older and I had a little bit better understanding. But by, by the time I hit 12, I think I say 13, actually, I had gotten a fight at school with two dudes, uh, we were at gym period and one of them said something disrespectful. So I got up and was like, what? Because that's just what you have to do. Do I advocate violence on schoolyards? No. But back in the day when I grew up, it was 1987. And so, you know, and you know, I had to, I had to, I had to take a swing on him. So we start the scrapping and uh, his homeboy, both of them from, were from, uh, uh, I believe they were from, um, a local, well, let me say it like this. They were a red rag representative, <laughs> BGs <laughs> specifically. So when you fight one of them, you got to fight all of them. So I'm boxing dude, man, bam, bam, bam. Next thing I get one of these, bah, I don't even know where it came from. It's somebody over here boxing me while I'm fighting the dude. So I'm in a right angle <laughs> at the wrong time. 
And so I ended up dealing with this dude, bam, 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 curl. His curl was like, bing, every time I connected, bing, curl was lighting up. But uh, anyway, so I came home with a black eye. I came to my grandma's house with a black eye. And my uncle Slim heard what I said. He's like, what? You want to take a knife or something to the, to the school, nephew? I'm like, Uncle Slim, I'm cool. Uncle Slim is just, just a fist fight. <laughs> so uh, he started taking me under his wing, man, and, and just really started schooling me. So, you know, I just, it'd be back in the Cadillac, you know, back in the Cadillac, learning life, learning lessons from my older uncle, man. And so I've kind of taken on that role for you guys. Y'all didn't have an Uncle Slim like I had an Uncle Slim. And, you know, and I'm just going to talk to you. It's going to be unfiltered. It's, it's the conversations that a lot of uh, young men need to miss out on. So that's what we do here. You know, as you guys know, um, this black, this page is dedicated to letting black men speak. I'm an advocate on behalf of black men and black boys. Why? Because you need one. Because I'm well equipped to do that. You know, there's a lot of lawyers out there and they say a lot of things and there's a lot of activists or whatever. I'm neither an activist nor a black power right but i know my brothers need to support they need somebody to speak and be on be the advocate and that's what i do and so when i talk to you black man it's from a place of love and i'm not going to tell you anything i wouldn't tell my own sons and that's the barometer by which i gauge what i say so nevertheless and i say all that to say big shout out to the sixty thousand people who subscribe to the channel man actually i think it's sixty thousand plus man Big shout out to everybody who's been here since day one, since we were talking about military uh, history and all that stuff, man. We still do that. I'm going to still throw some of them up. But I uh, also want to give a big shout out to everybody who contributed to the Super Channel. Super Chat, Mr. Infinitive. Thank you so much. He said, with the fade, you damn right, baby. I got that fade. Who else? I want to give a big shout out to Senyoka. Thank you so much for the Super Chat. I mean, the Cash App, bro. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, man. <clears throat> Let's see who else we got contributing. Because I want to give all my people a shout out. Thank you so much, Simon Morning, uh, Wes Walters, who else? Randolph, No, Marvin McCall, uh, all you guys who've been contributing to the super chat and the cash app. Uh, who else? I want to get up in here. Glenn Curtis. I'm a little bit older than you, Uncle D. You are doing it, and thank you for all that you've given to these men, my brother. I hope I inspire you, brothers, to be the best man you can be. Number one. Secondly, I, I, you know, I preach a freedom doctrine on this play page. I want you brothers to know that you're a free man and you should be able to do as you choose and live how you choose. Quiet Storm, you said, welcome back. Um, congrats on hitting 60K subscribers. Thank you so much, brother. Watcher, my boy back. Yeah, man, I'm back. Let's go. So here's the thing, okay? For those of you guys who've been living under a, a possum's ass somewhere in the middle of the Siberian forest, <clears throat> There's a movement out called Passport Bros, okay? Now, why did this movement happen? That's the question. Well, let's get to this. Let's talk about this. First of all, you saw earlier there was some screaming angry ladies who were talking about, Passport bro, you going over there messing with those foreign women. Yeah. <laughs> those foreign women. Yeah. I'm tired of that, bro. That's been going on for about a year or something now. But now what you see starting to happen is that Passport Bros is not just about single men. And that's why you have this lovely lady on here talking about her husband abandoning her. Now, this gentleman happens to be white. Passport Bros is targeted as a black thing, but it's not just a black thing. It's brothers, white men, everybody been doing it for years, okay? Jamal Smith said, looking well, resting, Uncle Dennis. Thank you so much, brother. I appreciate it. So, you know, um, why is this happening, though? Why is there an uptick in it? I want you guys to hear me. And I've said this before for the past three years since I've been on YouTube, and I mentioned it often when I was on, in my uh, Facebook days. The social contract is broken and all bets are off. What does that mean? Okay. Some of you all don't know what the social contract is. Somebody type the social contract in the chat room. Okay. And I'm going to explain to you what it is. First of all, <clears throat> everyone participates in the social contract every day. And we rarely stop to think about it. The social contract, it shapes every aspect of our lives, including how we raise our children, how and engage in education, what we expect from our employers, what we expect from our friends, what we expect from our family members, how we experience sickness, old age, um, 
uh, how we interact with the opposite sex. All of these are just some aspects of the social contract. There's literally a contract, an unspoken, understood contract that we exist in in this society. Okay. All of these activities require us to cooperate with each other for mutual benefit. And the terms of that cooperation define the social contract in our society, this Western society, and it shapes our lives. Okay. The laws and the norms underpin these daily interactions. Now, if I lost you, that's okay. You're going to catch it. I'm going to start cussing in a minute. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to lay it down where the cows can eat it. And you'll understand what I'm talking about when I lay it, but I got to get this out first. If you're with me, hit the number one button. If you're bored to death, that's okay, baby. That's okay. Uncle D is here. We're going to break it down for you. Okay? It's coming. Now, here's the other thing I want you to understand. In some societies, the social, the social contract relies more on families and communities for mutual support, okay? In others, like the Western society, is rugged individualism, right? And from that, we got what? The marketplace. And the state plays a greater role in the social contract. But in all societies, people, listen to me, people are expected to contribute to the common good when they are adults in exchange for being looked after, right? When they're vulnerable, that can be when they're young, when they're elderly, or when they're unable to take care of themselves. Okay, so what am I saying? Are you guys, are y'all y'all with me? Y'all with me? We could go live in the woods and be all right. You might not live as long, you might not be as healthy, wouldn't be any hospitals around for you to go to. The social contract says, I agree to live in this thing called society, I agree to abide by the norms and the rules and the laws. And guess what happens? If you don't abide by the social contract, if you break the laws, where do they send you? Penitentiary. So you, you lose the right and privilege to exist in polite society. Okay, y'all with me? Right? I'm, I'm, uh, let, let's, let's keep it going now. I, I, I want to get through this. Okay? Now, <clears throat> the social contract theory says that people live together in society in accordance with an agreement that establishes moral and political rules of behavior. You hear that? The social contract establishes what? Moral and political rules of behavior. Let me say that again. The social contract establishes moral and political rules of behavior. It's just some shit you don't do, okay? Because you can't do it. If I'm in the bathroom as a man and I'm having full-blown conversations with other motherfuckers in the bathroom, that's a violation of the rules, okay? We don't do it, okay? That's a man rule, right? That's, that's germane to us. Men don't cry like babies when bad shit happens. We're supposed to suck it up and be a man. Women are allowed to do what? They're allowed to emote. They're allowed to do all sorts of stuff. That's part of the social contract. Here's one you don't like. Women can hit men. Men can't hit women. That's something they're trying to weave into the social contract. It's not the same in places like Russia. You hit a man over there, you might get you you might get two across the chin, or five across the chin, and two black eyes to match. Okay. Now here, let's go back to it. Y'all with me? Hit the number one, but I know you're bored to death. Your ears are burning. We want Uncle D to cuss and talk shit. No, no, we just this is this is some. Graduate school level shit. Those of you guys who've studied um, sociology, you, you're familiar with this, okay? So just, but let me bring everybody else up because I want to lay this foundation before we proceed. So some people believe that if we live according to a social contract, we can live morally by our own choice and not because a divine being requires it. In other words, we, you know, this is something, we don't need this Bible. We got this social contract together. That may or may not be true. This is just what some people believe. The social contract, however, is designed to protect the most vulnerable in society. And that's what I explained before. Let me go over it again. The old, the sick, the women. Let me roll, roll that back again. The most vulnerable in society, the old, the sick, the women, the children. Right? And those in precarious situations with their jobs, with their handicaps, right? Okay. These 
hardships are exacerbated by these inequalities. So what does that mean? What that means is it's the men generally that are bound by the social contract to help the weak. Now the social contract again is unwritten. And it's, it's, it's something you inherit at birth if you live in a society. It, is, it dictates that we will not break the laws or certain moral codes in exchange. What do we get? We reap the benefits of our society, namely the security, the survival, the education, and other necessities that are needed, especially for those who are weaker, okay, or more vulnerable. Now, why are we here today? What's going on right now? Uncle D, land this plane. What, what, what's going on? Shout out to my man, Big Boss Real Talk. In other countries, cultures, they teach the women to respect the men. Highly unlikely she would stroke a man and suffer the known consequences. Shout out to my man, Big Boss Real Talk. Now, I want you to hear me on something, okay? This is where, this is, this is where the rubber meets the road. Why all the anger right now? You got to be an angry man to leave this country. Where is that coming from? The recent anger manifested in the polarized politics of Western countries. The gender war, right? We talk about that all the time on here. The gender war, culture wars, right? Is she a he, she, shim, him, whatever? The conflicts of, 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 over inequality related to race and religion. Intergener intergenerational tensions. You millennials, y'all hate them baby boomers. I don't even understand. Generation X is like, I wish you motherfuckers would calm down. You understand? Wild anger. Even stuff as simple as climate change, we can't, you know. Why is this discontent so widespread? Let me tell you why. <clears throat> because many feel that the system isn't working for them. There's been a failure of the existing social contract. Somebody write that down. Failure of the existing social contracts. To do what? To deliver on the people's expectations for both security and opportunity and all the other things. See, the old arrangements have been broken for many different reasons. The forces include technological change, which is revolutionizing work. We've seen that happen. And we've seen an entrance or, or an entrance, uh, entrance increasingly, uh, an increasing entrance into the workforce by educated women into the labor market. And what does that do? Come on, y'all know where all the red pill folk at. What does it do when you get that bitch a job in education? <laughs> she don't need your ass no more. So it liberates the women from the authority of men. It makes marriage obsolete, okay? So it liberates them from that. And the social obligations to even care for young children. They're free. They're free. The government subsidizes them. Technology has helped them be able to do the work that men can do. May, or at least make as much money. So now what? They don't need you for security. They don't need you for opportunity. They don't need you to help share that risk. Because that's what the social contract was there for. And that's what we're dealing with. Now we're going to take a quick break and we're going to finish this conversation up and we're going to get down to the nitty gritty. Do what you got to do. She's up on the main line. Tell me what you want, oh, Sheena's on the main line, tell me what you want, Sheena's on the main line, tell me what you want, call him up and tell me what you want, oh, call him up, call him up, tell me what you want.
All right, welcome back to the broadcast. Big shout out to my man, Big Boss Real Talk. He said, in other countries, the culture they teach, they women respect the men, highly unlikely she would stroke a man and suffer the known consequences. All right, so so we are back again. And we like I said, we're about to get down to it. We're about to land this plane right on the on 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 the, on the runway. So we're talking about the social contract. And I it said in this topic, no more social contract. Married men, married men leave wife for new life. Y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about, right? This is this is part of the whole passport bros movement. People only thought it was gonna be single guys doing it, right? But now remember, marriage is part of that social contract thing that they try to get you to sign a little piece of paper, but just like any other contract, right? Some of y'all ain't paying your gas, uh, your uh <laughs> your car note on time. It's a contract that says you can do. But how do they enforce it? Well, hell, you got to be here. So here's the thing. The social construction of gender, and we're going to talk about gender, and some of you guys have heard this before. The social construction of gender stipulates that the gender roles, the man and the woman, the male and the female, are an achieved status in this social environment. Okay? We specifically categorize people. And we do that so we can motivate behavior, social behaviors in them. You're a boy, okay? You're supposed to go out there and work and take care of a woman. You're a girl. You're supposed to submit and cooperate and get you a husband and take care of kids. And that motivates certain behavior. And, of course, men are better equipped to deal with the burden associated with labor and hard work. And, of course, women are better equipped to bear children especially in the early years, take care of them, okay? So what, what man loses, and shout out to Dijon, Deshaun Will. Are y'all with me? Let me know if you're with me. We can talk about some, some garbage if you want to, but I want you to have understanding for this whole thing we call passport bros and what you're about to see happening. Because what I'm going to get to is I'm going to tell you that eventually you're going to start hearing about married men in mass just leaving and moving to another country. That's what you're going to start hearing. And I want to explain why. Basically, what I'm telling you, fellas, is that what a man loses by the social contract is his natural liberty and his unlimited right to everything he tries to get and succeed in, in getting. What he gains is civil liberty and proprietorship over all he possesses, including his family. He has dominion over his home. He has control over his family. He has submission for his wife. So what happens when he doesn't get that anymore? Why is he now giving up his natural liberty to get the fuck out of here and do whatever the hell he wants to do in his unlimited right to, to, to everything he tries to, to everything he tries to, uh, to do and in, 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 in whether he succeeds or fails, he has a right to the things that he gains. Why is he making that sacrifice if he's not getting what he's supposed to get as a man? Remember, the men are the dominant ones. The men are the ones that do what? The men are the ones that make the society go round. We're the ones that hold the line. And we give up a lot. And women don't realize that. The government realizes it. And that's why they're willing to use us as utilities to fight their wars, to build their buildings, everything, security, taxes. Shout out to my man, Mr. Infinity. This is hitting close to home right now. So what would happen if the government broke the social contract? By example, <clears throat> when the government fails to secure their natural rights or satisfy the best interests of society, citizens can withdraw their obligation to obey or change the leadership through elections or other means, including when necessary violence. That was Locke that said that, not me. Famous philosopher, famous politicist. If, this, if, if the government fails to secure your natural rights or satisfy what's in your best interest, basically Locke said you have a right to revolution, okay? That's what he says happened when the government breaks their obligation to you under the social contract. So what happens when the contract is broken? Well, as the legitimacy of the state is based on the contract, your natural rights are given to you, 
You give up your natural rights, what? Huh? In exchange to the government? Huh? It becomes illegitimate. And revolution is justified. And that's what you see happening in marriages and relationships in the United States. This is where we are. Once the social contract is broken, which is what women did, shout out to all my black people, black men in the chat room, all my brothers, <clears throat> Simple Shit TV, Bricks and Bats, that's right. See, we always like to blame slavery. Y'all get tight. We love to blame slavery, which ended in 1865 in the United States. Slavery is the reason. But between 1865 to 1965, 80%, over 80% of black children were raised in a two-parent home. <clears throat> we had the highest rate of marriage in that 100-year time period directly after slavery. We built over 160 historically black universities, over 100 of which are still in existence today. We had black churches, black communities, black businesses, black bus lines, black everything. So what happened? Well, the government through Lyndon Baines Johnson and some of these liberal programs offered the lovely ladies some benefits. You no longer have to fulfill your end of the social contract to that man, that black man of yours. Why? Because what we will do is we will incentivize you to go to school by paying your bills. We'll give you welfare checks so you don't need them for money to help you take care of the children that you create. Hell, you don't even need to get married to this man. As a matter of fact, if you don't have a husband, guess what? You're more inclined to get the money. In doing so, guess what? Now you get your freedom. Ma'am, so take these breadcrumbs and leave your man. And that's what the lovely ladies did. Now, the Latino women were offered the same thing. White women kind of coaxed black women along. Latino women, because of their social contra, contract that was emanating from these Latin countries, their morals, their religions, different. something their, their customs different. They said, yeah, we'll take the money, but we're going to stick with our man. And that's why you see them going strong. On top of that, their social contract, the bonds of their social contract or the terms of their social contract were constantly being reinforced by new immigrants coming to this country. Unlike black Americans, there's no country called black America. So we don't have those terms of the contract constantly being reinforced. New women coming to the country saying, hey, get, get, get your man, get under, take care of your kid. We didn't have that. But that first hundred years, we were fine. But now in this last 60 years, since the sexual revolution, huh? Since, 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 since the social programs, which benefited women, they opted out of the contract. And now here we are in this particular year, in the 20th century or the 21st century in 2023, you got men exiting the country. And these broads are mad about it. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to talk about it. Y'all make sure y'all do what you got to do. I'll be right back. Uh, matter of fact, hold on a minute. We are 44 minutes in here. Y'all get the likes. Oh, how wonderful it is. Jesus promised he'll take care of me. Yes, he did. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, how marvelous it is. Jesus promised he'll 
to the broadcast check this out oh i'm out can't can't meet those standards all right so what we saw earlier this in the broadcast we saw these young ladies complaining about men leaving the country now here's the thing okay they're clearly mad about it okay now as i mentioned above the well let me do this first off let me give a big shout out to everybody who contributed to the super shot uh O Dog Cosby, thank you so much. Of course, I already acknowledge Simple Shit TV and Big Boss Real Talk. The president, LBJ, said he would make sure blacks will vote Democrat for the next 200 years. And the Democrats broke up the black family. Real Talk. Here's the thing. He didn't count on the passport bros. Somebody type passport bros in the chat room. OK, again, as I said, men exiting the country and these women are mad. Now, as I mentioned earlier, <clears throat> I talked about the social contract above is broken. So what does that mean? That means all bets are off. You got a contract with somebody and they breached the contract. You don't have to abide by that contract anymore. So the social contract between men and women required that we fill certain roles in society. Men are supposed to be what? Providers and protectors. In exchange, women provide cooperation, fertility, youth, and submission, among other things. Now, modern women, these lovely ladies, these hoes out here, <laughs> they have uh, uh, skewed the roles in an attempt to make men obsolete. Okay, what do I mean by that? Some of you all know just what I'm, you, you don't mind paying bills. You don't mind paying bills for a fit, feminine, cooperative woman. You'll take her out. You'll, you'll get her nails done. You'll pay her bills, whatever. Okay? But, it makes you hesitate if she's not appreciative or they act like they owe it to you or you owe it to them. But here's the crazy part. And here's where the shit really gets thick. Modern women want you to pay, play the traditional role, but they still want to act like street whores. They want to act like modern women. In other words, they want you to be a gentleman and, and they're going to act like hoes. You pay my way and I'm not going to give you anything in return. So now you got the passport bros leaving these broads. That's what's going on. And it's more traditional women overseas who are willing to abide by a social contract. So it makes sense. Right? Modern men benefit more from traditional women. And with this new source of con, uh, uh, shout out to Guillermo Williams. And with this new source of competition, the game has changed. The parameters of the parameters, the rules have changed. And these women are mad because now their demands are absurd. Check this video out. We'll be right They'll back. They'll be getting are the ones that they're paying for or women from impoverished areas that are desperate. Spread it out. I realize that the US dollar is worth a lot in third world countries and there are women that will appreciate that because they can do a lot with a little bit of our currency so this is such a pathetic thing to admit out loud i almost can't believe how often passport bros do it publicly like anytime you see a video of a woman saying like these are the standards i have for a man who i would like to date or marry there's always one of them in the comments multiple being like well <laughs> 
I'm out. Can't can't meet those standards. Yeah, and the thing you got to understand, fellas, if the standards that these women were asking you guys to meet were reasonable, then it wouldn't be a problem. But the standards that modern women have are absurd. It's what happens when you have a society full of women who, because they don't actually need men, and when I say need, I mean to provide for them. They got the government. They got the society that we have set up. Uh, you know, there's homeless shelters for women. They don't really need men. What they can do is decide to fuck the top 10%, get themselves impregnated by the top 10% of these men, top 20%, depending on how you look at it. And so they can just pick and choose and get ran through. They ride the rooster roller coaster indefinitely until they get to the point where they absolutely can't fuck the guys they want to fuck. And then they retire with some, it's some simp, salvation plan some simp retirement plan so what you've done with your passport bros movement is you've basically undermined their ability to exercise that game plan okay now here's the thing you guys got to remember society has about the equal amount of just as a, this is more or less about the same amount of men as women not yeah, it's off by a few percentage points. But the other thing you got to understand is that's how we start off. But then men die earlier. Men do stupid stuff. And, you know, we do stupid stuff and we, we, we're not here. We're not available. Okay. You see? On top of that, it takes more effort to be the type of man that women actually want. So every man who grabs a passport is one more that means one more feminist without kids without a pension pinch and a worsening society so you know before kevin samuels passed away you guys remember he was talking about leftover women type ks in the chat room type leftover women because i want to finish that lesson for him he was referring to a group of uh, uh, uh the korean women many of whom worked in flower shops in korea and they don't contribute enough to the tax base to support themselves. The government uses your tax dollars to do what? To, to fund the government, roads, buildings, and all that other stuff, medical insurance, the military, police, whatever. If you have a group that's not paying enough to support the tax base, where are you gonna get that from? You get it from the more productive group, i.e. the men. So what happens when large amounts of productive men begin to leave the country is it starting to register to you guys now is it do you see where we're going here the united states is like an employer right employees like to work where things are being done fairly and they're comp being compensated and appreciated they like to work where there's a good work environment we don't have that here fellas so men are exercising their options to leave. And of course, it's going to be the best employees, the most qualified employees first. Of course, the best men, the men who can afford to spend three or $4,000 to go overseas, the best earners. You got more options. You can go to a Thailand, a Brazil, a Colombia, a Dominican Republic, a Philippines. And some of you said, well, what about loyalty in the workplace? The social contract has been breached. Why would you be loyal to a company or a country that purposely allows one group of people to benefit and ride you? Family law, the family court system, your children get taken away. You get robbed in, in family court. You get accused of committing heinous crimes like grape where there's no evidence and you lose your life. Why would men stay in a situation like that? This is all men. The social contract is broken. Our country has not treated us fairly. So what do I expect to happen? Let me give you a prediction. I expect at some point in the near future that the government is going to begin to do things to try to prevent men from leaving. I told you all, first, 
the lovely ladies would come. Then they would send their simp enforcers. Y'all remember when I said this? Huh? Then they would send Hollywood. That includes the actors and the entertainers, all these people trying to shame you. Then they would send the peach preachers and the pastors. They all came. Then they're going to send the government, the law enforcement. And they're going to try to make it financially impossible for you to depart, maybe even making it a crime, some sort of exit tax. Look what they're doing in California to people who want to leave. Look what they're doing to government or uh, companies that want to live, trying to hit them with a tax. Because they don't have enough good men here in the tax base to support the leftover women that will be here. We're going to end up like Korea, South Korea. So they're going to have to try to stop the outflow of good men. But right now, the getting is good. Right now, if you're going to go, it's time to go. So if you're going to get, you better get on. Now, here's the thing. When I'm talking to men, I'm not just talking to two single men. I'm not just talking about young men. I'm talking about older men, middle-aged men, elderly men, all men, single men, and more importantly, because this is what we're talking about tonight, married men. Married men. Somebody type married men in the chat room because you dudes are the most, huh? you all are the most valuable. You're the workhorses of America. You work harder, you work longer. You put more money into the tax base. You got to take care of all them chilling. <laughs> you got to buy that bitch that house that you don't want to get up some goddamn where so she can keep up with her sister and auntie. You motherfuckers are the best horses we got. You keep the country going. You're out here breeding children, taking care of them. You're doing the state's job for them. Now, these women might act like they don't care. They might not act like what they see is coming, but they see it. These women belong to the state. The state is going to do everything they can to take care of them. That includes making sure you stay here. But as it is, what's happening? Husbands are beginning to leave their wives and families. It's quiet. You think the passport single brother's leaving? Y'all mad at, 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 at uh, Austin Holloman? Shit, wait till your granddaddy leave and go to Brazil. Ha! We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Y'all do what you got to do. This is Uncle D. Make it do what it do. Matter of fact, uh, we need to get these Super Chats up. We are almost an hour into this thing. I need 12 more Super Chats. Give me 12 more Super Chats. Other than that, y'all going to be with Jesus until we get these 12 Super Chats. Praise God. Y'all know what, we, what to do. Y'all know when to do it. We'll be right back. We'll be Pay me for my time, baby. Pay me for my time. Anyway.
Rob, we looking good. We just need six more super chats. Y'all make it happen. Come on. <laughs> six super chats we need four more super chats i want to keep this thing moving i need you guys to make sure you contribute four more super chats to the super chat we actually we got all we need now is two shout out to teddy fresh thank you so much said nothing profound to say <clears throat> showing support um oh man uh oh man we got guillermo williams thank you so much he said uh <clears throat> and dj wi-fi said ever since i went to mexico last year and met a Brazilian and Colombian woman who I'm still in contact with while on my trip has changed my mind perspective about ABW leverage options, guys. Shout out to you, brother. Yeah, man, that's that's profound. Um, again, my man Lucky Lefty said, um, blessings, Uncle D. Glad to see black men like you advocated for black men to put themselves first. Yes, sir. Put yourself first. Number one in the chat room. Anytime I ask you guys to put number one in the chat room, that's so you can see Number one, next to your name, because I expect you men to put yourselves first. Same thing I teach my own son. Same thing I advocate on my own uh, self also. Um, <clears throat> uh, let me see who else. So shout out to Lucky Lefty. Uh, Kat OBJ, thank you so much. He said, is thus the new world order? They want to get nothing. <laughs> Teddy Fresh said, nothing profound to say, just showing support. Teachy Norris said, preach. Wrench Turner on the wood. As we should. Big shout out to Deep Town Representative Ranch Turner. Uh, let me see. BX brother said, uh, thank you for the super chat, brother. Thank you for the ten dollars. Be about peace and pleasure. Thank you for the three dollar super chat. BX brother on on and one more. Thank you so much, bro. Cat again. I got five on it. Clark Brown. Thank you for the ten dollars. Pop smoke ghost. Thank you for the five bucks. Apple weeks. Thanks. You thank you. Um, appreciate your wealth of information. Bringing my plan to the Philippines into fruition this year thanks for the advocacy for us black men both young and old passport bros barbers worldwide that's what's up simple shit tv always good to see you in here jamari 81 super sticker thank you so much brother big boss real talk for my uncle d time knowledge wisdom blizzard king drop a real talk oh man <laughs> that's what's up that's what's up big shout out to everybody who kept this thing man uh let me see did we get one more in let me see. I think we just got one more in. Hold on a minute, man. I'm coming through. That's what I'm talking about. But yeah, we did. So we good. So um, <clears throat> here's the thing. Let's continue this conversation. What are we talking about? What we left off, what we talked about is no more social contract. I spent the first hour of this broadcast explaining to me, this, explaining to you all the social contract and what the implication. A big shout out to Urban Eagle. Thanks all. Thanks for all you do. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you for being here for, for such a long time. And so what we see happening now is married men leaving a wife, praise God, for a new wife, hallelujah. <laughs> married men leaving their wife for a new life. That's what I see happening. Now, I want to, case in point, praise Moses. <laughs> let's, let's put up <laughs> this footage right here, which I pilfered. From a fellow YouTuber, Yash Yashana, shout out to him, man. Y'all make sure y'all go subscribe to his channel. And say Uncle D don't mean no harm, man. He just want to take it and 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 use it. You know what I'm saying? My eyeballs ain't that good as I used to be. But check this out. I want y'all to look at this. 
six years together for 20 with my husband who recently left and he's no longer in the country and has abandoned the relationship so I would like to proceed with attempting to sell the home that we share together and move on and I was hoping that you could help me with that my phone number is thank you bye so what you see right here is little mama is looking for a lawyer okay she is uh her man has fled the scene just like her hairline and uh she he is apparently moved to another country she's gonna keep talking let's keep listening so depressed mm. i unfollowed him on instagram because i don't want to see his new life like i just feel like that would be too painful she don't want to see his new life she feel like do you think this is a black man that she's talking about because i ain't heard the n-word once i'm just saying it don't seem like this does not seem like the response that black men get when lovely ladies <coughs> uh, uh, uh felt as though they're done wrong i'm just gonna give y'all one guess as to what the complexion of of this this handsome gentleman who's fled the scene praise god keep listening Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. But curiosity killed the cat. And I went and looked at his page today. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. And he changed his profile picture to a picture of him lying on a beach. Like, yes. He's just out here living life. Like, he, he, he living his life, baby. He living his life. Y'all on the beach. In peace. You ain't got to worry about you no more. Your mayonnaise monarch, your mayonnaise monarch has left. Praise God. Keep listening. Without a care in the world, like. <clears throat> he doesn't even care. He don't care. Maybe he never cared. Maybe he did. You know what I mean? Maybe he never cared. I probably did. Maybe I was just a meal ticket. You was. Convenient. You was convenient. He's legit just lying on a beach without a care in the world. He is legit lying on a beach in the daytime, getting his balls juggled at night by some fine bitch that's half your age. That's what's happening. So the boy, I don't know if I told you guys this already. The boy, take note, take note. But he, he left me, but he actually left the country. Like it's- So she found out he left the country. This is her husband of six years. Pay attention. Literal abandonment. So abandonment. She said abandonment. Notice how when men uh, leave women, it's abandonment. But when women leave men, they go on to find their peace. Y'all notice that? But let's keep listening. Oh, so, I'm just stuck here with, you know, the house, the mortgage, the car, the this, the that, which has both our names on it. But he said. You, you a boss bitch. You a bad bitch. Of course you can handle that. Deuces. So I need to, I need to figure it out. So I'm going to go speak to a lawyer today. Yes, Lord. And, um. The lawyer is going to say, what's your husband's address? I don't know. He left the country. Damn. That's what he's going to say. Keep listening. Put my big girl panties on. <laughs> and try to clean up this mess that he left me in. No, no, you got yourself in that mess. Let's keep listening. Yo, you guys, like, can you guys believe this? Cause I really can't believe this. That is my life right now. If it wasn't for my girls, my friends, my family, I would have probably jumped off a bridge. I'm not even gonna lie. Like literally I would have. Zaddy is gone. Ended it all because this is a lot. Somebody type Zaddy is gone in the chat room. It's a lot. He did me dirty. He mm. did me really dirty, but I I love him. I miss him. She still loves Eddie. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. This can't be a black dude. I don't. I'm absolute. Let's, let's keep listening. I him. I want him. You want him. Zaddy was the best thing you had going, LaBoo. Keep listening. But, I mean, he made his choice, right? Yes, he left your ass. That's what he did. All these divestor tears. <laughs> you can't force somebody to want you back. He don't want you. He didn't want you. He gone. He gone, LaBoo. 
Today was a hard day, but I'm so glad that I had my girls here. Got your girls there. All these divestor tears. Now, what, 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 what happened to all that, you know, white man can do no wrong. And I'm going to go get me a white man. Weeks since my husband that? abandoned me. Okay, she two weeks since since Zaddy has left. Let's keep let's continue listening. And today I woke up to an Uber notification. He's still using your shit. Keep listening. Because I told you guys he left the country, right? So you know when you yep. take an Uber at home, it just says Uber. But when you take an Uber, let's just say for shits and giggles. Now some of y'all might think this is some kind of uh, uh, fraudulent thing, but I'm looking at the way her eyes moving, and she's remembering her eyes are moving to she's remembering what's going on let's keep listening in brazil it'll say uber brazil brazil that boy done went to brazil hold on a minute brazilian brad somebody type brazilian brad in the chat room um that's connected to my business account sir are you on a business trip are you okay so you a boss bitch with a business i got it let's let's put it together come on does your new not have uber she probably don't. She don't have no Uber. She no. She don't have Uber. Keep going. Yo, this man just ruined my. Whole but she finer than you though. Let's keep listening. Whole morning with that. Last week he wanted to message me asking me if I changed the Netflix password. So he still he asked her if she changed the motherfucking Netflix. You using your Uber, and asked you if he changed the net. Him and his new bitches Netflixing and chilling. Let's keep Yo, looking. you up and abandoned me. You want to know about the Netflix abandoned. password? Does your new not have Netflix? Probably not. Sir, are you okay? My nigga, you wildin'. By the way, guys, I say nigga now. So, if you don't like it, I don't like it, you guys. I say nigga now. So, I want you to understand who we're dealing with. Let, we're gonna dig deep into this little lovely lady's psychology in a minute. I don't say nigga now. Keep listening. Hi. I don't have no more white people in my household to censor myself for. You understand? I don't have, I say nigga now because I don't have to act like I'm not one of these ghetto ass broads out here because ain't no more white people in here to tell me not to act like a ghetto ass broad. Keep listening. I'm saying. I can get back to my roots now. That's basically what she's saying. Attitude. Okay. Said she Shout out to my man, yeshanas.com. Let's keep listening. Three, four, five, six. Now she's discovered this motherfucker is buying A6 tennis shoes for the whole goddamn <coughs> Brazilian uh, volleyball team or something. These some size 11 having ass bra. Keep listening. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten pairs of women's volleyball shoes in size 11. I wear eight and a half. He has bought, he has said, look, I'll get them shoes for y'all. I'll sell them to y'all. He's down there making a profit, okay? The, the, what, Br Brazilian Brad has come up with a new stream of income on yo black behind. Keep listening. I bet you using my EB account to shop yeah. for your monster foot bitch. The, bitch, the divorce has not gone through this as community property. Keep listening. Are you okay, sir? Are you okay? He's fine. Like, He's are you good. actually okay? You guys, look. I cannot believe I married such like a heartless, mean-spirited guy. You, know I mean? you can't believe you married such a heartless, mean-spirited guy. Brazilian Brad, you lowered your standards to be with Brazilian Brad because his white skin, okay, that, that, that beautiful porcelain skin, which you thought was going to rub off and you was going to get some Brazilian babies and, I mean, some little half-white biracial babies. And so it erased a whole lot of errors with this man's character. You saw it ahead of time. If it was a black man, you damn sure wouldn't have let him get away with all that. Brazilian Brad was who the fuck he was. Keep hitting the number one button. No. I mean, <clears throat> and this is no shade to any of my tonettes who are size 11. You are not a monster for bitch, but his bitch, that's a monster for bitch. I bet she fine though. But she finer than your ass. <sighs> Needless to say, I need to sit down and reset all my passwords. I've already done the major stuff, like, you know, banks and emails and stuff, but there's little things I forget about, such as eBay, which I barely use, and, like, Netflix and stuff like that. Like, this guy's just out of his mind. Mm -hmm. And cars. Fucking Mustangs. 
He out there buying cars. Ah, <laughs> uh, let me take a quick break, man. I'll be. <laughs> he out there buying cars on your. I am the blizzard. I am the blizzard. What that means is, I represent that cold shoulder that you're going to begin to feel from black men. And we see you for who you are, black woman. We see you for the hate-filled individuals that you've become because of your selfishness and your waywardness and your falling away from morality and what the Most High God wants for you. But let me tell you the difference between you and that white woman. That white woman stood by her man. For 500 years of blood and guts, she stood by her man. And whether she liked it or not, she was right on board with him dominating this world. The Asian woman has been oppressed. The Asian man has been oppressed by 500 years of, of, of white male domination. So has the Native American and the Indian and the Indian and the African and the Arab and everybody. It's the white man's time to rule. Everybody gets a chance. Black people had 80,000 years and you sat next to the black man when he ruled. For the past 500 years, the white man is ruling. Guess what you do? Instead of being good companions and getting in line and waiting your turn again, you want to crap all over the black man, even the ones that mean you well. So ladies, you're being replaced. And here's the thing, I'm not going to be nice to you about it. See, I'm not like Kevin Samuels. He tried to do right by you. He tried to teach you. But I realized you're going to hate me. So what I'm going to do When I'm called home to my ancestors, all that you say will be justified. And I'm okay with that. I am the blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome back to the broadcast, baby. <laughs> y'all make sure y'all hit the number one minute button, man. That's representative of you putting yourself first, brothers. Put yourself first, black man. I'm going to share a little footage with y'all, man. Uncle D was hanging out in De Mexico recently. Had a great time in Mexico, man. This is Uncle D at the club. Over here, I want y'all just to see Uncle D got that foot action, man. Y'all, look, look at that. Look at that. I can't play the video's music. But look at the foot action down there. And bam! Hitting it. Throwing up the W. You know what I'm talking about? Look at that, man. Somebody typed the W in the chat room. I'm going to put... The W in the chat room right now. Y'all ain't know. <laughs> Out there rapping, man. Look at that foot action, man. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm still a little bit too hood. But anyway, <clears throat> what we're talking about tonight, man, is we're talking about no more social contracts. We're talking about married men <laughs> leaving their wives for a new life. And we talked about one lovely lady in particular who... <laughs> Had her hat handed to her by Brazilian brand. She was married to him for six years and he got apparently got tired of the bullshit. But let's go ahead and finish this bean footage. Shout out to my man. Documenting my journey. Her journey. So we back. So for you guys who didn't see the first clip, just roll it back at that about 10 minutes. <clears throat> and you'll see what everybody else has saw. I'm just giving you a play-by-play -play before we break this psychology of this lovely lady all the way down. If you listen to people long enough, they'll tell you who they are. But let's keep listening. July 2nd of 2019, that was the day that my then husband got on a plane and left. He Ghost. abandoned the marriage, the relationship. Left your ass because he was tired of your bullshit. Okay, keep listening. And left. Now, I will say that prior to that happening, I had found out that he had been having an affair. And when I found out... 
he was banging another broad and you stayed with him. About the affair, I was obviously devastated. Mm -hmm. But you was going to look past what Brazilian Brad did because you needed to keep that porcelain white skin next to you because that was your claim to fame. Keep listening. And angry and, you know, just the full range of emotion um, that comes with that. And they stayed with us. We had a great time, etc. So everything was going smoothly. Or so let, I want y'all to hear this. Look at the <laughs> look at the benefits and privileges that this lovely lady is giving Brazilian Brad. Brazilian Brad with his porcelain white skin cheated on this broad, right? And she said, "Well, you know, I had to get over it because you know he's Brazilian Brad. His social status is much higher than mine, and he's my claim to fame." Right? How many would she give any of you Negroes that much? You boy, you would never hear the end of that. Keep listening. Or at least that's what he was presenting to me. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to July 2nd, 2019. Um, you know, it was a regular morning. I got up, had started to get some work done. He made me, um, I think I made a cup of tea and went down into my workspace. He made me lunch and he left the house he made so is okay so here's what you got to understand brazilian brad was taking that midnight flight that 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 overnight flight a probably was it that five o'clock flight? it was probably that overnight flight down to brazil or either you're leaving out of miami or you're leaving out of use of this that overnight flight so you know he made your breakfast and nothing wrong as soon as he finished making you breakfast he went to the bank Got all the money he could get out of there, said goodbye to everything, and then got in the wind. Praise Moses. And <clears throat> that was the last time I ever saw my then Brazilian husband Brad. again. He actually completely abandoned the relationship. He not only uh -huh. left the city, he left the country, left he left the ass. continent, got on a left plane. And your ass. No forwarding address, no... um. Nothing. You know, That's new phone number, no nothing. He just nothing. Left. left. So, as Ugly. you can imagine, I was, I, it was like being hit with a truck. Like, I was completely, um, like a, the rug was pulled out from under me, which was where I had the separation agreement sent to. Um, but that failed. So, that address was no longer. Notice the African ear, 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 earrings. I'm going to talk about that. You went from married to white boy to celebrating Africa. Ma'am, this is this, this, somebody type pro black in the chat room. Remind me to talk about this later. Keep, keep going. Associated with him or his family. So I did end up contacting him. Now, I I'm no longer associated with him or his family. They stopped fucking with your ass. Once Brad came, once Brazilian Brad came to his senses and left your black behind alone, right? That's they okay. They got cool. They know where he's at. They happy you left him. They happy you gone. They happy you gone. I didn't have a forwarding address, obviously, or a forwarding phone number. When he and none of his family was gonna tell your ass. You are not in their social circles. He initially left the country. He was still using my business phone, my Uber accounts. He was still using all my all business accounts, shit. which shortly thereafter I canceled. So mm -hmm. the only um, information I had for him was an email address. So I emailed him asking him where he wanted the divorce papers sent. And he received it, but did not respond. He didn't respond, motherfucker, because... He don't want you serving him. If you're going to get a divorce, it's going to be by default. You didn't serve him. He ain't got nothing to do with you. Yeah, he done. So at that point, I have you guys being here for me through this journey. Um, your girl is officially divorced, yeah, okay? Divorcee, Tony, if you will. That kind of sums it up. It's not really juicy. You know, it's not as juicy as maybe some of y'all thought it was going to be, but really COVID delayed the process, but he dragged the process on. And um, I'm just happy that it's over with. You know, he owes me thousands of dollars. Like I said, he was still using my phone. He owe you thousands of dollars. That's what you're talking about. That's what you can say. It's plenty of men to get divorced from women and these broads owe us money. We don't get that back. Keep going for international calls and... Ubers and Uber Eats and, you know, 
his lawyer fee, all that he owes me thousands of dollars. But I'm gonna take the L it. on that because you took a, I you literally, took a motherfucking L. I'm no longer associated with him, and I want nothing to do with him ever again. Get your ass up out of here, Uncle D. Will be right back. I got something to say. There you go. Welcome back to the broadcast. You are here with the Blizzard King. Now, gentlemen, <laughs> I'm going to say something that uh, probably is going to be controversial, especially for you Bible thumpers and so on and so forth. Um, I encourage all men to leave these crappy marriages ASAP. Let me say that again. Let me say that again. <sighs> I encourage you men to lead these low down, loud mouth, rotten ass broads that you happen to be married to. Do not waste your life trying to make things right. It'll never be right. Remember, as men, we have options. And there are far less men who are good men, and that is men who can fill the role of protector and provider and be have a moniker of, 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 of grace and, and, and patience with these rotten ass broads out there. And if you can deal with an American woman, a modern woman here in these Western countries, you can deal with all of them. Now let's flip the script. On the other hand, there are far more women out there in the world who are fit, feminine, cooperative, attentive, malleable for you to deal with. As opposed to wasting your life with one of these rotten ass raggedy broads. I need you all to put these women on notice that the social contract has been broken and you know what the social contract is. You not getting what the fuck you supposed to get. And therefore all bets are off, bitch. <laughs> all right? Now, under these circumstances, the motherfucker just up and bounce. If you find your wife cheating, fuck it, just bounce. If you find out your raggedy ass, no good lying ass wife is cheating, just hop on the plane, clear out the bank accounts, and leave the bitch. Quietly sell everything you can. Move to Colombia, move to Brazil, move to Thailand. That's enough to make you want to stay there forever. You never come back. Start a new life. Get your multiple streams of income and be like Brazilian bad Brad sitting on that beach. You understand me? Somebody type Brazilian bad Brad on the beach. Do it. If you got kids, don't stay for the kids. You're just going to make their life hell. Hell, is she going to divorce you anyway? It don't matter. You fighting over a house that you ain't going to get no way. Ask for split custody. Do what you can do. I love hearing about men leaving these raggedy ass, rotten ass wives and girlfriends for a better life with peace of mind and happiness. I love to hear that. Brad found the cheat code to divorce. Great. He ain't paying no attorney's fees. He's not paying alimony. He ain't sticking around for two or three years negotiating with this raggedy broad in some mediation. Hell, <laughs> he got the way out. He got out. He's no longer even in the country, much less the state. He can't be served. 
You can't wreck him financially. By the time the divorce is over, he already be set back up. He don't give a shit. Let me tell you fellas something. As a person who has been through divorce, your happiness is more important than that fucking house, the fucking car, retirement, and all that other resources that you left. She gonna get this shit anyway. Either she gonna get it now, or she gonna get it in child support, she gonna get it in alimony, or she gonna take it out in gray hairs that you gonna grow on the top and the side and the back of your head. And the rest of your hair is gonna fall out from dealing with that shit. You're better off bouncing on one of these rotten ass bitches and dealing with a divorce. I know, I know, I'm not supposed to curse like this. I apologize. I apologize to all the Christians in the chat room. I'm, I'm sorry. She got the whole house. And this rotten ass broad is worried about some shoes and an Uber. That lets you know she's selfish as hell right there. But the truth is, fellas, leaving these broads and not playing with this system that we have here, that's the only way to teach them. That's it. That's the only thing that's going to teach these modern women the lesson that they need to learn about breaching the social contract. All bets are off. We don't have to be civil with them anymore. Is this too harsh for y'all? Am, am I being a little too raw? I told you we was back in the Cadillac. I told you this is the type of shit Uncle Slim would say me. Tell me. Now, if y'all not ready for this, we can, we can change the subject or whatever you want to change. I don't. I'm just trying to give it to you the way you expect me to give it to you. I'm not giving you legal advice. I'm giving you the advice so that you can have peace of mind. Have the divorce is going to happen. Let her pay for that shit. She can have all the judgments she wants. Yeah, he's supposed to pay me 20. He ain't here. He ain't got no job here. He's in another country. Well, you're going to have to, where is he at? I don't know. The judge, the, the, the little funky ass family law lawyer ain't going to go through all that. To put to put a man <laughs> to try to get a man to pay some attorney's fees, you gone. If they want to play dirty, play dirty. You understand? That's the only thing that's gonna teach these lovely ladies a lesson. This dumbass divestor thought she was gonna get her a white man, and he was gonna tolerate her bullshit. Did you hear the part where she said she didn't treat her black husband like that? Did y'all hear? Type black husband in the chat room. So she divorced her black husband and then hooked up with who Brad, who turned into a Brazilian Brad. Think about that. Hell, we passed this one off to Brad and Brad threw it back. She got dumped by Dusty Brad. Somebody type Dusty Brad in the chat room. He pulled a Shawshank Redemption on her ass. Y'all need to see the movie. It's like she's at a bloody crime scene and she trying to mop up the blood and shit all over the ground. <laughs> That's what she doing. But see, here's the thing that I know about the, the, the Vesta Tears. Praise Moses. The Vesta Tears bring forth the life into the righteous black man in America. Praise God. Hallelujah. The best of tears are the milk and honey of the earth as far as a black man is concerned. Bitch, I told you. <laughs> I just wish we could have heard Brazilian Brad's side of the story so we could laugh at her silly ass even more. Home girl got fleeced 10 ways, fleece 10 ways to Sunday. She ain't gonna recover from this. Brad, shit, it sound, don't sound like he was even that special. She paid his way, and he abandoned her ass, according to her. But let me tell you this, don't bring that bullshit black to black men. I saw with them African uh, pendulets, uh, uh earrings in her ear. Don't bring that bullshit back to us. You had a black husband, you left him, apparently. Remember that. Remember, we ain't shit. Somebody type, we ain't shit in the chat room. Come on, fellas, let's do it. We ain't shit. Type, we ain't shit in the chat room. Okay? I need you to hold that L and move on with yourself. 
This chick looked like she, 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 we looking like a psychological breakdown or something. I don't know. You'd be lucky if she hold on her sanity. <laughs> she said he's a bad person for leaving her. Think about that. But let's let's kind of look at why she he left it first. Let's hit the number one button. Now, y'all make sure y'all put yourselves first. Hit the number one button. We'll be right back. Do what you got to do. We'll be right back. Prism has come to me with something. So everybody, please listen. She's going to be talking at length, but this is extremely important, I feel. So with that said, uh, Prism, you have the floor. Hey everybody, I don't know if everybody's aware of what's going on in um, YouTube. Are you aware, if you are aware of the situation with the attorney, can you please put a one in the chat, please? Yeah, everybody put a one in the chat if you know what what person we're talking about. If you don't, um, basically we have a lawyer who's positioning himself to be the next Kevin Samuels, but Kevin Samuels, while people would make fun of him and stuff, wasn't that dangerous this guy if he has his way is going to be um this this guy's a problem and it's something that needs to be addressed prism has come to me with something so everybody please listen she's going to be talking at length but this is extremely important i want to see you win and i put pressure on us black on us men to understand how we did not get our masculinity training and we have been doing our work okay but now it's time for you ladies to understand you're going to have to bet on us like you want us to bet on you i talked to i talked to several men this week i don't just get on here and talk shit i have men i call around the world and i ask what do you think about this concept? Level set me. Shout out to brother uh, Dennis Sperley. Dennis, I'm not going to get, well, I don't want to tell people's business, but I'm going to tell you, high value men retire their women or make them come work for them. So ladies, what is it going to take for you to free yourself? Because you and I both know you're dying at these jobs. You're in a toxic. Shout out to the late, great Kevin Samuels, man. Nobody did it better, man. Big shout out to him. I, I still watch some of his clips. The one thing about all these people stealing this shit, it's all over the internet, man. And people are culling, uh, combing through his, his uh, different broadcasts, man. And they're just showing all this wisdom that this man uh, put out there in the world. And, um, you know, he's greatly missed, you know. And uh, as, a, as a friend of his, a comrade of his, man, you know, I just appreciate you all, you know, uh, recognizing what I saw very early on. You know, I, I used to re regard myself. I would say this man is like an aircraft carrier and I'm just a, a, a battleship maintaining my side. And I'm just going to, you know, follow him on in, in, into what we was trying to do. We had big plans, but, uh, you know, life happens, things happens and uh, it is what it is. But uh, I'm going to proceed forward with what I'm doing. And what I do on this page is, man, fuck them hoes, man, on everything. I'm not here trying to save women. I'm not here trying to teach them. You don't see me. You don't barely see me talking to them. I'm here to talk to black men about being the best men they can be. And specifically, I'm here to talk to black American men about being the best men you can be. You are free men. You understand me? You are free men. The world belongs to you. You have a right to go see it. I'm not here to try to reform or change these women. Fuck it. I'm not into trying to change grown people. And you don't have time to try to change them yourself. I want you men to go out and see what the world has to offer. That's what I want. That's why I'm here. That's the difference between me and my good brother. I respect his, his mission. And uh, to me, it, I, I was not a believer. And he made me a believer. You know, he helped me find a good, high quality woman that I am now engaged to who, you know, follows my instructions and is uh, just a wonderful human being to be around and has brought a whole sense of uh, light to my family, you know, my sons included. It's just a wonderful place to be now uh, here in this home. But uh, other than that, man, we're going to get back to it. So, you know, 
this woman that we're talking about, for, God, for you guys who don't know, just look at the videos, this lovely lady. She says, Brazilian Brad, her husband of six years who left her, was a bad person for leaving. But we have to look at why he left in the first place. Y'all hear me? Because some of you men are dealing with the same shit right now. A lot of you married men are dealing with this right now. But you know what? Let me do this out of respect. Let me give a big shout out to Deep Payne's thoughts and opinions. Shout out to you. Shout out to Wrench Turner. Snow Pookie Dipped. Ah, hologramic EMC. Thank you so much. Mr. Infinitive, I served papers a week ago. Wow. There you go. There it is, man. Kevin3905, Uncle D, thought they wanted the house and the car. She got to keep all the cash and prizes. Why is she not celebrating? Right. No, what they want to do is destroy you, brothers. For all you men who are going through divorce, that lovely woman that you married, you don't know who the fuck you're dealing with till you meet her in divorce court. She wants to destroy you. She don't want to see you on no beach happy with some fine bitch rubbing your back and shit. She wants to destroy you. That's that's what they want to do. <clears throat> My man Cat O said, uh, no one does that for the reason, for no reason, though. Exactly. Jackson Daw said she got some of that blizzard eye. She did, she needed some. My man, uh, the quality guy said, big shout out from Avalon and 120 Street, uh Taco Pete. Ah, you know, you know, that's what's up, man. Big shout out to Laverne Gibbs, Addy, tired of roast beef, uh, Brazilian Brad upgrade. He sure did. Mr. 43TX, she got that not going to cry by Mary J. Blige repeat. Yes, she does. Big Easy, 1980. A little something for the church on, on Cold Shoulders Collection Play. Praise Moses. Martel Pray, great show, Uncle D. I love the go-go music. And you use, you use during the first break in the show. Love you, Uncle D. Keep up the good thing. Yeah, man. I love you too, brothers. Man, thank y'all so much. Ron Baldwin, thank you so much. Urban Eagle, thanks you for all you do. <clears throat> thank you, guys. I appreciate this. So let's get back to this uh, barbecue <laughs> or should, or should I say this, 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 uh, this, 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 uh, this cold roast that we about to make happen right here. So, you know, it's interesting that women always say, and I said this earlier that, um, uh, the men leave them, but they never really give a reason why, you know, you really think a man would just be married to a woman and stay for six years in the marriage and then just suddenly get up and leave. Right. It lets me know she's not telling us the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. That's what that tells me. OK, uh, shout out to original man. He says she's going to try to sneak back to the cookout just like Stacy Dash. That's why she wears those hotel earrings. Give it a minute. I'm going to get there, baby. You know, it take Uncle D a little time to land this 747, but I'm going to get there. See, if uh, here's the thing. <clears throat> um if you let women talk long enough, you let anybody talk long enough, they tell on themselves. They show you who they are. Let's analyze some of the stuff she said. The fact that she called this grown-ass man, her husband, a boy, so casually, is probably one of the reasons why he left. I can guarantee you that there's no respect. Shout out to all the white dudes that follow my page. These lovely ladies will constantly tell you, you brothers say this shit. They, they, oh, they treat the white man differently. Eventually, she going to come out and be who she is. A leopard never changes its spots. A lovely lady from the black community is going to still be the lovely lady over there. This shit going to ooze out like pus coming from a fucking pimple. It's got to come out. Shout out to my man, Hezekiah. Okay, so she was disrespectful to him like she disrespectful to a lot of black men. Here's another thing. She probably said, I don't need no man one too many motherfucking times to him. And then she found out, she, she found out, didn't she? She found out whether she needed one or not. Got you on the internet crying. Now, what do I think about a Brazilian Brad? He's okay. Hell, mentally, he's in a much better place in Brazil than here. Whatever that woman did to push him away, she needs to take accountability for. But she not. But either way, <laughs> Brazilian Brad is up 9,000. City Boy's up 10. How about that? You know what I'm saying? But if you listen to her talk about it, 
All she talked about is what was owed to her. Now, the thing I want you to listen to very carefully, and I'm going to go into something deep, and I want y'all to understand. She talks about this relationship as though she was a child who was abandoned. And it lets me know he was carrying her self-esteem in his back pocket. What do I mean by that? That relationship was everything to her. It was her rebound from her black husband. She upgraded. In her mind, she had monkey branched. She married a white man. You understand? You married a white man. Mm. You married a white man in a white supremacist dominated nation. In a white dominated nation. He has been brought up and culturally taught to understand that he doesn't owe you anything, ma'am. And this is for all the rest of you silly ass fucking divestors. More importantly, that's reinforced by his family and friends and the greater society. His social status in this society is at the top. You as a black woman, not a woman of color, but a woman of African descent, a black woman, yours is at the absolute fucking bottom. And that's something that she understood and that's something that he understood. How do I know that? Listen to this fool talk. He absolutely destroyed her life. But because he is a white man, he still reaps the benefit of a certain level of respect. She didn't cuss him out. She didn't call him everything but the child of God. He still reaped the benefit from his white social status in her mind. If the black man had left this no good scallywag, where's Deacon Salty Balls at? I, where's he at? I don't know where he at, but would you let me, if the white man, <laughs> if the black man had left this scallywag, his name would have been plastered all over the internet. She would have tried to ruin his life completely. Where's the lie in that? Am I lying? Some of you black men don't pay your child support for a couple of weeks late, and you a horrible dad. Your name is all over the internet. She's showing up at your job. She didn't say that about Brazilian Brad, did she? Not a goddamn thing. She asked if he was okay. Are you okay? She said she still loved him. She still wanted him back. Did she say all that about her black husband? That she more than likely divorced with her boss bitch self? I don't feel sorry for this woman. She got what she bargained for. You make a deal with the devil and you wonder why you got burnt. You got what you bargained for. Now what I notice about her is there's no accountability. We talking about the social contract. The social contract obligates women to do certain things and men to do certain things. There's no accountability and no responsibility. It's all on him. It's Brazilian Brad's fault. It's all his fault. As a man, if I love someone, if I love someone, if I love a woman, there's nothing in the world I wouldn't do to keep a smile on her face. For me to get up and walk away, it isn't just because she made me mad, right? Or even some hot young 20-something-year-old woman got me out. That, I, men don't do that. Not men with sense. For this man, not only to abandon his marriage, but the whole goddamn country, that means that was a horrible woman. Yet she seems to have no accountability and no responsibility. You wonder why the, why the family's not fucking with her? Why they not dealing with her? Why his family won't help and cooperate? Because they knew she was a horrible woman. But she takes no accountability. See, you black brothers, you know, you, you, you know. You know these modern women. You know these lovely ladies. We know intuitively 
it's not all his fault because we know how these lovely ladies are, don't we? Somebody type lovely ladies in the chat room. We know how they are. We know you. She states he was using her business account for Uber. That means she owns her own business. That means she's a strong, independent boss bitch, which means she's not marriage material. She's a two-time loser. We figured that out. You tried black, you tried white, neither one of them worked. Maybe it's you, boo. But you modern women, you modern American women, you keep ignoring what men's needs are. This is what the fuck is happening to you now. See, you was worried about the passport bros. Now you got to worry about your husband leaving your sorry self. Don't you think they see what we doing? These men see men like me. I'm 40 something years old. I got a beautiful 20 something year old fiance. I'm happy. Motherfucker going to Mexico and shit. I'm looking young, losing weight. I stopped putting pictures up of the food she cooked. This motherfuckers is getting mad at that. Don't you think these other 40 something year old men see what I'm dealing with? And don't you see they see the thousands of other men out there of all races who are, who are forsaking these Western women and say, I'm going to get me a woman with some traditional values. Don't you think they see that? You think that funky ass little piece of paper you call a marriage certificate is going to stop your man from taking the next flight to Thailand? I know a dude that left the job, $250,000 a year, middle man, a management job. He gone. Another young man. Up and left his wife. She he found out she was cheating. He fucked around and didn't even wait for the divorce paper to be filed. Moved to Columbia, got him a bad bitch, got joint custody. He in and out the country. The dude she was cheating on with left her, and he's he's still with this fine Colombian woman. See, ladies, remember, women aren't the ones who hold the keys to the marriages. Men do. You might have a you you might have a motherfucking trap daughter who get the pussy, but it's pussy everywhere. Men control who the relationships and whether you get one or not. And once your husband has had enough of your sorry behind, not listening, not cooperating, being an evil tyrannical bitch, they done. No, there ain't no sense in fighting. What the fuck am I fighting? What am I fighting for? When I can hop on that overnight flight and be in Rio de Janeiro in, in six, is it six and a half hours or eight hours? I can't remember. I don't even think you need a visa anymore to go down there. They say, come on in, gringos. Why would I fight with you when I can bounce? That marriage certificate ain't shit down there. Them women don't give a shit. It don't cost that much to live down there, and you happier. You got this broad crying all over the goddamn social media network, trying to get attention and sympathy, because she ran her man off, and her man got snatched up by a fine-ass Brazilian woman. Think about that shit. I want you to think about that. Think about it. Think about it. What if the situation was reversed? What if you had some dude on the internet bitching and cr crying and complaining because his broad got took by a better man? Huh? We'd be laughing at his ass. Wouldn't we? Tell the truth. If a dude got on the internet, man, my girl, man, she left me for a motherfucker. Uh, they got on the internet. He, the tea. We'd be laughing at these motherfuckers. <laughs> We'll be laughing at his ass. Like, damn, shit. Shit, man. City boys down 30. Damn. Cut that shit out. We be calling them all kind of weak ass, punk ass motherfuckers, man. We laughing. See, there's a very popular word we men use here in these male oriented YouTube spaces. And you don't have to leave the country to understand what it is. The word is called hypergamy. 
And what you saw Brazilian Brad do was practice hypergamy. He made, he upgraded, got him a fine young bitch who apparently plays volleyball, which means she's thicker than a snicker. Somebody type that in the chat room. Bars. Thicker than a snicker. All right? He living in Brazil on the beach every day, just sipping pina coladas, fucking fine bitches. Right? Best decision in his life. You modern women are going to learn. Okay? It's a different day. It is a different day now. Okay? This ain't the 80s. Dudes don't give a shit no more. Just like you bitches can run around and get your vagina away to any goddamn body. The social contract no longer binds you to chastity or anything. It's no longer bound to us. Even stuff is sacred to you rotten ass broads as marriage. No one gives a shit. The man had enough. Y'all do what you got to do. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the broadcast. So big shout out to Jackson Dawson said she said she's done with him. But if he wanted her back, she'll still take him back in the blink of an eye. But not not if he's black. Right. I don't feel sorry for her. She wasn't with him for love and fidelity and fidelity and faithfulness. She was with that man because he was a white, a white gentleman. OK, sleep with the third album. Brazilian Brad had was her karma. Yes. Concur. Uh, original man. She's going to try to sneak back to the cookout just like Stacey Dash. That's why she wears those hotel tap area. Agreed. D pain thoughts and opinions. Thank you so much, man. Snow Pookie dipped. <laughs> Snow Pookie. <laughs> Shout out to Hologram M EMC. Uh, my man, Mr. Infinity. Like I said, he said I got served those papers a week ago. Uncle D, I thought they wanted a house and cars, and she got kept all the cash and prizes. Why she not celebrate? Right. Celebrate now. Look, we're gonna go a little bit over. I hope it's okay with y'all. Y'all, I got some more I want to say about this subject because this is what's coming. It's not just going to be single men. You ain't just going to have young brothers like Austin Holloman who are free and can go wherever they want. You're going to start having married men dipping. Your daddy, your granddaddy, your uncle, your boss, they're going to dip. Money going to disappear. Cars going to get sold, and they're going to be gone. I'm trying to tell you it's happening. You're going to have a whole lot more walking marriages going on because the option is available. The option is available. That man had had enough, just like many of you men. My advice, don't come back, not even for a fucking funeral, wedding, baby shower. Don't come back. Let that broad settle your life issues. Let her do it. Apparently, he's broke. Her white king was mooching off of this Lovely chocolate-nated lady. So what has he got to lose? But as I said earlier, it's understandable that she would marry a broke man who is white because the lovely ladies lower their standards for Brad and Chad. Y'all seen that before. They look past many issues that he might have as a man that they would never stand for in a black man because of his white skin. It's true because he has a higher social status. And she sees that as a social benefit. And that's what these women want, social status. If he ever comes back to the state, 
They need to start all over again, developing some sort of career path or something like that. He might as well stay down there. Some of y'all think he was dumb because he forfeited half of the marital asset and alimony and maybe if she was making more money. But truthfully, he didn't forfeit anything because this black goddess was the breadwinner. Somebody type black goddess in the chat room. Okay? This black goddess was this white king's breadwinner. So he cashed out and she paid for a lesson that she learned. Now, again, we all saw this. I want you to peep this out. Y'all notice those African continent shaped earrings in the video after Brad left. Did y'all see that? Did y'all see that? Do you need me to put this back up here? I want you to, let's peep this out. I want you to lay eyes on this. Okay. Let, 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 let's let's look at this. This is three years later. Documenting my journey, July second. I want you to let let let's take a look. Look at these look at these earrings right here. Let's get a good gander at them. Okay. Are y'all seeing these African continent shaped earrings that this and bodacious beauty has on? Look at that. I mean, now, 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 Brazilian Brad left her ass, and all of a sudden she sprouts black empowerment wings and wants to fly ass back to Blackistan. Brothers, I want you to be very, very careful of, uh, of, of black women like this. There's plenty of them in the pro black community. So often, and shout out to Wendell Granderson and Hezekiah Coleman. Uh, give me two more super chats. I, I want to keep this train of thought going. I need two more super chats. Give me two more. But I want you to hear me on this. You don't hear nothing else I'll say tonight. When you go into that black, pro-black community, a lot of these women's pro, their prior romantic relationships have been with non-black men. Some of them might even have children by non-black men. 1.2 million black women in the United States over the past several years have given birth to black children that were not sired by black men. What does that mean? That means Chad and Mario and motherfucking Ham uh, uh, Mohammed have been fucking these queens, impregnating them, and leaving their ass to the tune of 1.2 million. That's what that means. Black women have more children than black men have. You would think, oh no, black men are father not. No. Uh-uh. <clears throat> 1.2 million children over and above what we have. Now, what happens after they get burnt in these relationships? More likely, they become pro-black. Yeah. That's why I tell you, these pro-black motherfuckers ain't shit. And some of the dudes are even worse. They whole tapping in, in, in the motherfucking, they working for the white man, smoking weed, drinking, and whole tapping at night. So when these young non-black men use them up, reject them, then they bring get, get, get their funky ass feelings hurt, and then they come back to the black community and blame black men. They be saying shit, all black men ain't shit. Shit like that. And then you assume they're mad at black men. Because you assume they've been dating black men. But in reality, they've been fucking around on the other side over there. Blaming black men for their heartache and their pain. And demanding that we have patience with their silly asses while they heal. And they've been fucking around in the watercolors. You black men, remember that face. Remember this face. Because in a few years, when she realizes Brad, Brazilian Brad, was just using your dumb ass and never wanted no KK Keisha, she'll be back. Shout out to Terrell. Fellas, do not become her fucking backup plan. You understand me? She'll be swearing before God. All she ever wanted was a successful black man. This she a whole divestment. 
All I ever wanted was a successful black. Stay over there, KK Keisha. We don't want Brad's funky leftovers. Brad didn't use you. Brad didn't run game on you. Brad doesn't have to pimp, use pimp game for these KK Keishas. They don't feel sorry. I don't feel sorry for her. Brad didn't play her. She played herself. She wasn't a victim. She was a willing participant. KK Keishas will always volunteer to play the fool for Brad. Now that's sad. Say something to you brothers. And I want you to hear me loud and clear. Well, as a matter of fact, we're going to take a quick break. I want to say this. But I want y'all to hear me. We're going to take a quick break. Tell me what you want. One message for first your fellow black man, and the second one message for the Filipinos. Hi, Mike. Oh my God. Um, message for my brothers. Well, you're free men, and I've been telling you guys that you're free. You're not bound. You are children of the Most High God. This world is yours. He created this world for you to enjoy. Uh, go see it. Go and go explore the world. Go with an open mind and an open heart. Um, make friends. It, it, you know, go and see what you've been told you you can't go and see. There's so many people that have made you afraid to travel. It made you a trade afraid to go see what the world has to offer because they want to keep you in your position. They want to keep you in that little box that they brought you home in. What do I mean by that? It's like you bring a puppy home or a kitten home. You want that little kitten to stay kitten, cute and small and manageable. But now you all have turned into huge Rockwallers and, you know, pit bulls. And it's time for you to get on out that box and go see. You know, if you will, you're not a tiger cub anymore. You're a tiger. Go explore the world. You know, that's my thing. You're a free man. Begin to act like it. Nobody... You're not in bondage anymore. Our ancestors fought so that you wouldn't. You got your passport. You got your you got your life ahead of you. You're not bound to one nation or another. As much as I love my country, I love the United States, there are other countries out there that you can also begin to love. So go see what the world has to offer, fellas. The world is yours. Now to my Filipino. <laughs> came through tonight we deep up in here thank you for helping me get to 60,000 subscribers it's been a long time coming we're gonna get to 75 and we're gonna get to 100 baby but anyway big shout out to deshaun jones my man cat cat to o officially uh official k kobe she's a forward and attitude <laughs> That's, that should be a rap song forward and attitude shout out to terrence fleming brazil is undefeated 
uh, be our first trip down to Brazil changes changes my life. Yeah, it will. And I plan on marrying my Brazilian woman next year. Man, shout out to you, brother. I ain't mad at you, baby. Do what you got to do, man. I find your peace and happiness forever. Um, anyway, so let me let me let me go ahead and talk to y'all like you need to be talked to. Any black listen, any black man with good sense. I want you to hear me, brothers. Any black man with good sense who gets a taste of the world outside and is able to find a way to support himself and live a more peaceful life is not going to return to the United States. No, nah, no. Nah. If you able to see what the outside world is like, if you able to find a way to support yourself, if you are able to live a more peaceful life, if you got good goddamn sense, if you got the sense God gave a billy goat, you wouldn't be returning to the United States. You wouldn't. Brazilian Brad, also known as Zaddy, left that divester right here for a fine ass exotic Brazilian woman. Now, if that man can leave, if this white American man can leave at the drop of a dime, then why can't you black men? Aren't you equal? Put your numbers, put, put number one in the chat room. What does that mean? Aren't you equal, my brothers? Have your ancestors not fought in all the wars, shoulder to shoulder, arm in arm with these white men? Have we not helped build this country from its foundational? Shout out to the foundational black American men. Have we not defended this country against uh, enemies foreign and domestic? Have we not policed its streets? Have we not laid the bricks and the concrete? Have we not built the skyscrapers and the houses, the airplanes and the jets and the trains and the cars? Where my people are from Detroit at? We have earned the right to do anything that any other man does in this country. And if that right means to exercise our freedom to leave, this great country, then that's what we should do. Why should the black man stay here and take this abuse? Aren't we equal? Don't tell me you stand for the women because I told you they breached the contract very early on in this conversation. Hell, this long ass conversation is two hours long. So why are you staying here? I'm saying because the women will be beautiful women everywhere. What if they black, more black women in Brazil and Dominican Republic and Colombia and then they are here. And they don't have no tattoos. They got real hair. They're childless. They're feminine. And they're always fucking smiling. Hot damn. You just got to deal with the heat. But you built for the heat. Time is on your side, brothers, but you ain't got all the time in the world. You need to travel and enjoy yourself. For those of you all who are listening to me, you might think some of the things I'm saying are harsh. Well, it's a fucking harsh world we live in. You don't want me telling these black men to exercise their rights, to go overseas. You don't want me to tell them to abandon these rotten ass relationships with these horrible ass women that they happen to be married to. Tell these bitches to act better. Tell these women to fulfill their end of the social contract. That's what you do. Don't tell me what I need to tell them. You tell those women to behave themselves and stop acting like whores and start behaving like women. 
dignified, classy women who want to be wives. Then then I'll talk to the brothers, maybe. But until then, no, 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 no. That's not how it's going to go. That's not how it's going to go. What you're going to start see happening now is men of all ages and whatever relationships, may they marry, divorce, whatever, they're going to start leaving. And unfortunately, and I'm going to tell you like this, you ain't letting them see his kids in no motherfucking way. They might start leaving the country even if they do have kids. That's what's going to start happening. You think you got a fatherless problem now? Wait till your daddy is over in Thailand some goddamn where. And you ain't seen him since you was 12. And you 22. That's what a breach of the social contract has done. Men hold the line. The social contract benefits the weak of the country, the elderly, the women, the children, the infirm. The men are the ones who maintain and defend the country. It binds them. You benefit from us being in this society, not vice versa. We could replace a bitch any goddamn time. There's a new bitch coming along like a bus. They're making new ones every day like new cars. We don't need you. You need us. And that goes for all the men. They need us. We don't need them. And that goes for any country on this planet. Don't you think a country would love to have hardworking, able-bodied, sophisticated men to come to their country who are already successful in their country to bring some of that success to their country? And make the men in that country step their game up. Hell, goddamn yeah. You got some of the best education, best tradesmen right here in the United States. Plumbers, electricians, truck drivers. You could go help innovate a whole nation. Much less the doctors and lawyers. Don't you think they want American-trained doctors and engineers and lawyers and stuff coming over there and fitting into their society? Bringing some of the light there? Shout out to Tony Terrell, Wendell, and Hezekiah. Of course they do. They will gladly (laughs) accept you and your trade skills and your American dollars and your connections. They will gladly accept you. That's why most places in America go, you don't even need a, a goddamn visa. And especially if you marry one of their women and settle down there and they get your tax dollars. Oh, yeah. It's a status symbol to have enclaves of Westerners. That means your country is safe. That means you got an influx of money. And look, here, go to Mexico. <laughs> I wish I could show y'all some of this stuff. Cancun is filled up with Americans. You got Gucci, Louis, all of my, my fiance were like, damn, nigga, this look like the Galleria. Yeah, riding down the street, riding down Ku Klux Klan Boulevard in the heart of Cancun. Shout out to gunmetal guy. Uncle D, I'm about to let the barbarian enter the gates and take these Jezebel women. <laughs> yeah. Every time we show up, we bring our things with us. And usually that includes the money. You you men are only doing what's natural. I'm not even trying to get you to feel guilty about it. See, it would be different if you had a good woman and you had a holy marriage. Anytime you have a country that allows people of the same sex to get married, That marriage is no longer, marriage as an institution is no longer sanctioned in that country by God. Because the God that I pray to, the most high God that I read about in my Holy Bible does not sanction those type of marriages. So these are no, these are marriages I can't even honor. I'm just going to be honest with you. And you motherfuckers may not like it, but it is what it is. Uncle D, homophobic. Maybe the fuck I am. 
But when I read my Bible, my Bible calls that an abomination. And if a country supports that abomination, that means that whole institution of marriage becomes invalid. So that is part of the reason that the government has overextended and violated the social contract. And so what does that mean? You men are within your rights and say, well, not only are you trees and puppies and cats can get married, but also I get robbed in family court. Why should I stay for that? I'm going to take my passport and I'm going to exit. And I'm going to go to a country where I can find peace of mind and happiness. And these are now your problem. This woman is your problem. These leftover women are your problem. Mark my words, you're going to see it happening. Husbands are going to begin to abandon the households and leave these wives right here. These rotten ass Western women, this, the few of them that still can get married. So you ladies who do have husbands, you better hold on. Because for $800, he can leave your ass. For the amount of money that he can get selling his car or getting out of his 401k or his bonus check, he can live well for a couple years. And all it takes is a, a good man. It only takes a little while for him to get back on his feet. And the divorce will happen. Shit. Some countries, you could file a divorce in that country and serve your ass here, and the divorce is gone. It's a wrap. Keep all that shit. You can have all that American shit. The house that ain't paid for, the funky-ass cars that barely work, them bad-ass kids that I ain't going to see no way, you can have all that shit. That's the attitude the men are now developing because the contract is broken. The social contract is broken. They're not getting what they're supposed to get. And I ain't mad at them. Other than that, we're going to cut it a little short tonight. In other words, I'm not going to invite you brothers in to speak because I'm still enjoying myself, right? Okay, but we'll be back tomorrow. We're going to have a hot week, man. It's going to be a hard-hitting week to week, man. But then buckle your motherfucking seatbelt, baby. Put your... You know, we're going to ride, baby. We're going to ride. You riding with Uncle D this week, man. Big shout out to Cody Marshall. Thank you so much. My man, Gun Metal uh, guy, he said, Uncle D, I'm about to. <laughs> Listen, Cody Marshall, just like the dude left the wife in Harlem. Like, yeah, bitch, I ain't coming home. Put your mother on the phone. I ain't coming home. Other than that, man, God bless y'all. love y'all. This is Uncle D. And as I always say at this time, I am. I am.